Miguel Facuse Bargem. He was one of the most wealthy and powerful businessmen in Honduras. Before his death in 2015, Bargem was one of the most recognizable faces of Honduras's oligarchy. In Honduras, there's about 10 or more families who essentially control most of the land, wealth, and industry in Honduras. Miguel Facuse Bargem was one of those men. When he died in 2015 at the age of 90, he left behind a really mixed, if not horrific, legacy. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the legacy of Miguel Facuse Bargem. Miguel Facuse Bargem was born in Tegucigalpa, the capital of Honduras, in 1924. And his parents were Palestinian Arabs who immigrated to Honduras from Palestine in the early 1900s. So Bargem is a Palestinian Arab. And he ended up going to school in the United States, attending Notre Dame University in the U.S. and graduated in 1944. After graduating from Notre Dame University, he moved to Costa Rica and lived there and worked in the aviation industry with planes during the 1950s. In 1960, he returned to his home country of Honduras and got involved in the palm oil industry. And he created a company that exists to this day known as Dynant. And in the 1960s, Bargem became a huge tycoon and landowner in Honduras with his company making soaps, detergents, snack foods, and biofuels with palm oil and by the late 1960s his company Dynant began going into contracts with the American company Procter and Gamble after becoming a huge business tycoon in Honduras in the 1960s Miguel Bargem started becoming very influential in Honduran politics and was till his death in 2015 in the 1980s, he became the chief economic advisor to President Roberto Cordova. And in addition to this political legacy, one of Miguel Bargem's nephews was served as president of Honduras. Carlos Roberto Flores was president of Honduras from 1998 to 2002, and he is one of Miguel Bargem's nephews. With all that wealth and power that Bargem had comes the ugly side. As a huge tycoon and landowner, Miguel Bargem was infamous for taking away land by force, where he would intimidate and use violence against poor farmers and take their land by force in order to incorporate it for his palm oil farms. And because he had so much political power, he could rely on the government to take his side and even rely on the police and military of Honduras to help him execute his land grabs, which has led to a legacy of violence in Honduras over land rights. When Manuel Zelaya was the president of Honduras from 2006 to 2009, one of Zelaya's agendas was land reform disputes and trying to help the poor farmers have some say-so with land rights. And people like Miguel Bargem and other big landowners hated Manuel Zelaya and his policies and also how Manuel Zelaya was raising the minimum wage in Honduras. 
the 2009 coup against Manuel Zelaya's overthrow was supported by many of the rich oligarchs of Honduras, including Miguel Facuse Barjum, who was an outspoken supporter of the 2009 coup. After the coup and overthrow of Manuel Zelaya, Miguel Facuse Barjum and Dainant engaged in even more violence against poor farmers in Honduras, especially in the Bajo Aguan region of Honduras. Since 2009, the Bajo Aguan region of Honduras has been embroiled in lots of violence over land rights between Miguel Facuse Barjum's Dinant organization and poor farmers in that region. And Dinant security guards have been engaging in violent killings of poor farmers who resist having their land taken away from them. And also some security guards from the Dinant organization of Barjum have also gotten killed. And it still carries on to this day, even after the death of Miguel Barjum. In 2012, Reporters Without Borders, which is based in France, named Miguel Barjum as a predator of press freedom because his organization had also been engaging in violence against journalists in Honduras covering the story. And also in 2011, WikiLeaks ended up revealing that drug planes were landing on private property owned by Barjum. In 2004 and onwards, there were drug smugglers flying and landing cocaine shipments on his private property. During the last years of Miguel Barjum's life, his global reputation really took a hit because a lot of these things I just mentioned became public and exposed, including many people who were killed by Miguel Barjum and his company Dinant. One victim was a man named Antonio Trejo, who was a land rights lawyer and also a church pastor who was representing peasant groups in the Bajo Aguan region who were trying to do lawsuits against Miguel Facuse Barjum. And Antonio Trejo was killed in 2012 while at a wedding. And so by 2011, international investment groups and companies withdrew their business and partnerships with Dinant, including a French energy company called EDF, who in 2011 stopped buying carbon credits from Dinant, and also a German bank also stopped financing Dinant's biofuel projects. And in 2015, Miguel Facuse Barjum died at the age of 90 with a soiled reputation. His company, Dinant, is still very active to this day, and his family are still in control of it.